Is this Earthbound? No, no, no. It must be Undertale. Well, I'd be wrong again, because this, my friends, is Circadian. This is an RPG game that was inspired by Earthbound, and it is currently being created by Jeff Brooks. Um, I was lucky enough to be able to interview Jeff Brooks in this video series, and you guys will get to hear all of the, you know, great things that are going into Circadian and, and you know, what we hope to see in the future, as well as some alpha, beta, and, and current um, clips um, and screenshots of what the game looks like. As you can see here, we have a little bit of a, you know, a tease. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Hey, what's going on guys? 3D Icicle Freeze here, or Jake, and I have a very special guest. Please introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Brooks, otherwise known as Jeff Game Dev, and uh, I'm here to talk about my video game Circadian. And which is so awesome, because Circadian is a game that's very similar to Earthbound or Undertale, which... We, which we all know are very popular games. And so I actually, I found Jeff uh, via Twitter from Beta64. And his game is coming along so well. And so I actually asked Jeff if I can interview him. And I, he, I was lucky enough for him, you know, to accept. So I got uh, four topics and uh, let's just jump right into it. <clears throat> all right. All right, so the... Uh, ooh, excuse me, gotta edit that out. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Question one. What was the first game you've ever played, and how old were you? Do you still enjoy it? So, so yeah, the first game I ever played was a, a variety of games. I was basically born with a Nintendo controller in my hand. <laughs> uh, I, had older I had older brothers, and... They had a regular Nintendo and a variety of games. So the first games I played were Final Fantasy One, Dragon Warrior, uh, gosh, uh, Punch Out. Nice. Just uh, so many of those classic Nintendo games, and I love them so much. Nice. And do you still enjoy them today, or are they, or they're kind of like you're over them? Oh, I do. Uh, sometimes I'll get them out. Like uh, I think about. A year ago, I played through Final Fantasy 1, and I was like, wow, this game is just epic. And then if I want to play like a short uh, fighting game, I'll just play Punch-Out. Like That game is just so fun and has so much character. Absolutely. That game is really good. I actually played it for the first time um, uh, this year, actually, earlier this year. And I was so bad at it. My, my sister's boyfriend said to me and my sister, he said... All right, I'm going to give you $50 if you guys could beat uh, Mike Tyson. And me and her didn't even get to Mike Tyson. <laughs> so, no, no. Oh, yeah. No one's going to beat Mike Tyson. <laughs> that game is hard. <laughs> Absolutely. It's funny, though, because my sister, who doesn't play video games, actually did better than me because she was fighting for the money. She wanted the money so bad. So, <laughs> um, that was a bad bet. That was, that was a mean bet. There's no way... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. All right, question number two. What video game systems do you own, and which three are your favorites? Well, I don't own all my old systems anymore. Um, like, uh, Little Brothers took them over the years and stuff. Uh, so right now I have a Wii, a PlayStation 2, a PlayStation 3, an Xbox 360, um, uh, but over the years, oh, I, I do have a, a Nintendo 64. Actually, that's that's nice. the one that gets the most used, probably. Nice, <laughs> yes. <laughs> my, my three favorite consoles are, though, are the, the classic Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, and, you know, it's, it's between N N64 and PlayStation 2, but PlayStation 2 probably beats it because it just had such a wide variety of games. It was just such a just a game changer you know for the time absolutely um i i don't even know if i could do three favorite systems because i just i i own i own too many systems and um but i 
it's definitely somewhere with the N64, the GameCube, the PlayStation 2, and the 3DS. I have to say, they're all very... I mean, I don't know if you consider the 3DS a console, because it's like a handheld, but... <clears throat> but, um, but yeah, no, I definitely... And it's, and it's cool, though, because I wasn't really the... Like, I, I missed... Like, cause I, I'm 20 years old, so I missed like the N the NES, the SNES, the Sega Genesis, and and so I've actually repurchased those now, and I love them. So they're they're quickly rising on the the charts. Nice, yeah. I was born in 1987, so it makes me 30, and uh, so that was like the year that the NES came to the U.S. So uh, I was pretty fortunate to grow up in such a time. Oh, you you were in its prime. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I I missed it, but hey, I'm I'm happy I jumped on board when I did because I I love it. All right, so question three: At what age did you start getting into video game creating, and what or whom inspires slash inspired you? Well, let's see. I was 11 years old when I first started developing video games. Believe it or not. Wow. And. That would have been, like I said, uh, I was born in 87, so that would have been like 1999. Wow. Um, so, what inspired me um, was games like Chrono Trigger and Earthbound. Mm -hmm. uh, I just loved those games so much, and I spent so many hours playing them. And um, who inspired me? Uh, at least starting out, was my older brother because um, he downloaded a, a, a game engine like, you know, 1999 game engine. Oh, wow. Uh, and it was called... And you can still go to the website. It's verge-rpg.com. Mm -hmm. And there was this, this niche indie game community that existed before, like, the indie game community ever, like, happened. You know, when... When like Super Meat Boy became, you know, mainstream, it was like, wow, everyone got into indie games, and so right. there's this there's this huge community on this IRC network called Espernet, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of a lot of great things have come out of that ne uh, that network, um, such as um, there's this guy, uh, he's been my friend uh, ever since that time, uh, and he created the GoDot game engine, wow. uh, and so it's just this guy I've known for you know 18 years, and so uh, the the Verge RPG community was on this IRC network, and um, my like I said earlier, my my older brother downloaded this game engine and started working on it, and he he was programming and using the assets that were in there, and he uh, he asked me, hey Jeff, you're drawing all the time, can you draw my characters? And I said, well yeah, and so I opened up the character editor. And uh, which was DOS. This this was a DOS game engine, mm -hmm. and started creating sixteen by thirty two sprites with five frames per direction. And so I was eleven years old when I started creating artwork for games. That is honestly so awesome. As somebody who comes from um, a very small indie, you know, company, and we we actually me and my my cousin made it, and we were I hate to say it, but I think we're we're pretty much done. But the two games we made, making sprites and 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 I I was the music maker and and making a game is not easy. So the fact that you started that at eleven is absolutely incredible. I have to give you so much props because, in fact, there was a time, <clears throat> actually, that I wanted to make a video game when I was about fifteen, and I said, "Oh, I'm I'm too dumb to start learning programming." <laughs> <laughs> and I, I I shouldn't have had that mentality, but um, I and then I actually started writing a book because I figured I was a pretty good writer. So that's where I changed directions. But but yeah, no, I I know I can appreciate because I've I've worked on two games that making games are very difficult. So the fact that you started so young is awesome. That's really awesome. I appreciate it, man. And uh, yeah, yeah. Um, shortly after I started helping my brother make his game he he stopped doing it himself and so uh that's when i picked up like well i guess i'm gonna learn programming and i guess i'm gonna learn how to make music and so uh from from the start i was i was doing everything you know i was creating all the elements for the games 
Right. And, um, and yeah, you're right. Uh, that mentality is not good to have where you said, oh, I'm too stupid. And that's, that's just false. You know, uh, anyone can do anything. They just need to work at it. You know, it's just time and effort and passion. Right. Absolutely. Man, those are inspiring words. I love that. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Moving into our second topic. So this is uh, just three questions about the games you have made. Because I think it's... Um, I wanted to do this topic because I went to your homepage. And um, I was like, wow, I didn't know that you made all these awesome games. Because I think people see on Twitter, you know, Circa Dean and... They're, they're super excited for it like I was, but I, I don't know how many people take the time to actually go to your website. And so this is why I wanted to make this, because I think people deserve to know all the other cool games and, and things you've made. So, all right. So let's jump right into it. So <clears throat> question four is how many games have you made and on what platforms? So this is an interesting question because uh, I've been working in professional games since 2010. So, uh, I guess that's what we would consider because any games I made before that were pretty much, you know, amateur hour and learning experiences, mm. um, and never really got, uh, an official release. Okay. Um, so, uh, the first games I made were in the Battle Bears series at Skyview Entertainments. Uh, we, we worked on, uh, a franchise called Battle Bears and we made a many games so i worked on a, a plants vs zombies clone which was called battle Bear fortress and uh that was on ios and android and i worked on uh, a game called battle bears gold which was an online multiplayer third person shooter game oh wow and then uh, on a game called uh battle bears pro uh they changed the name a few times mm. uh the the uh, mobile uh market is interesting and, uh, and then I worked on a game called Let It Goat, which was kind of like a Flappy Bird style game. I've actually heard of that. I've actually seen that on the App Store. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that, that went kind of viral for a little while. Right. Um, I, I didn't work too much on the mechanics. I did the uh, localization because we, uh, we were releasing it in Japan as Let It Moo. Oh, okay. And we, were, we made it a cow instead of a goat. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, there's a variety of games. I, I made a few Flash games with them. I made I made a lot of games for Skyboy Entertainment. Um, but then, uh, in 2014, at the end of 2014 in August, I left that company and I started a new company called JB Gaming. And I developed. We went straight into mobile because that's what I've been doing. And so I was like, well, I know the market. And so. I made a game called Beastbound, which was kind of a hybrid of Super Mario RPG and, um, uh, well, it was it was a lot like Super Mario RPG, and it was just uh, it was free to play, and so uh, it had interesting aspects like an auction house and, uh, and quests, and um, and uh, so you could you could like interact with other players in it and. Um, unfortunately, the game was very complicated and uh, depended on online servers, right. and um, and those those servers actually went out of uh, Facebook bought them. It was uh, Parse.com, and so Facebook bought them and then shut the servers down. And uh -huh. I would have had to start paying good money for those servers, and so that game had to go away. So it's kind of weird, mm. um, but it was it was a pretty popular game. Uh, I was actually surprised. I like Googled it and saw people were like posting the recipes and stuff for items you can make in it. And I'm like, wow, these people are like really into my game. And uh, <laughs> that's awesome. That's a good feeling to have. And um, and so then after that, we made a game called Utter Panic, and that's U D D E R. And uh, it was a uh, basically an infinite runner, except you you are an alien flying mm. uh, in a in a UFO. And you're abducting cows. That's yeah. awesome because I've also heard of that game. <laughs> That's so cool. Really? That's funny. <laughs> uh, it and it was available on iOS uh, and Android, and it is now only available on Android. Uh, I, I, 
I have since left the I have left the startup I made actually, um, and they did not uh, renew the iOS license, and so uh, Apple pulled the game because if you don't pay them a hundred dollars a year, they pull your game. Oh, actually, okay. um, but then after that, uh, I made a PC game that will hopefully be on console soon, and it's called Grave Danger, and it's it's an ode to it's a love letter to the Lost Vikings. Cool. If you've ever heard of that game. I have. Mm-hmm. That game is really cool. It's uh, it's by Blizzard Entertainment, and it was one of their first titles, and it's on Super Nintendo. Wow. Um, so, Grave Danger is about... Uh, so, Lost Vikings is about three Vikings, and you have to use all of them together and switch between them to figure out puzzles. And so, Grave Danger decided to... We decided to do that again, and... So instead of three Vikings, you have a wizard, a cowboy, and a grim reaper. Oh, and cool. So a variety of characters, and um, they all move and attack differently, and so you have to utilize their strengths and weaknesses to help each other out to get through the environments and solve puzzles. And um, that is the last game I released, and that released less than a year ago, uh, December 19th in 2016. Wow, awesome. That's so. And, uh, oh, sorry. What's that? I was just gonna say, and that that game is like the probably the pinnacle of my professional game development career because uh, I was the I was the producer, I was the director, I was the writer, I was the programmer, mm. and um, I and I hired uh, like a, probably six different people to work with me uh, in person to make it. And we produced it in about eight months. Wow! Nice. And it's just a it's just a really great game, and it it doesn't have the attention it deserves just due to marketing dollars. Right. Isn't this is the unfortunate part about the indie game development right. uh, marketplace? Is that uh, you know you either have to be lucky or you have to pour a ton of money into marketing. Right. Right. Absolutely. And actually, it's funny you said that, um, <clears throat> because in in fact, that's actually why me and my cousin, when we had made our second game, um, it was like a it was like a classic space shooter, kind of like um, what's that game, uh, uh, Darius Twin, or, um, but like, it was like an old space shooter, and I, I hate to say it, but I kind of had my doubts before we even started the project, and and sure enough, when we finished it. Um, it really wasn't, it had gotten much less activity than our first game did. And actually, I hate to say it, but that's kind of what uninspired my, my cousin who programmed. So that's kind of like, it, marketing is huge, because had, had the game, our game gotten more publicity, maybe he would have been, been inspired to, you know, want to work on a third one. So, so definitely publicity, it, you know, that's like a huge thing, you know, with making... Um, your game and actually you said before that you felt that that project was you felt like at the pinnacle of your your gaming you know your video game creation and that actually goes into the next question so i want to ask what game are you currently most proud of would would you consider that game the most you know that you're like the most Absol- proud of absolutely i am super duper proud of grave danger and i, I love it uh, I like I said, I I wrote the game, like I wrote all the dialogue, and I, it wasn't something I was planning. It's just something I had to do. And people have people have told me actually, I've watched like YouTube videos of people playing it. They're like, this game is funny, and I'm like, wow, I, I can't believe people love my writing that much. Uh, I've never really considered myself a writer, uh, but you know, it's something that has always been strong with the games. You know, you're creating a story when you create a game, and uh, you pull this element and that element. And, um, so yeah, I am so proud of Grave Danger. Uh, I don't think I've ever worked so hard in my life until I was working on that game. And, you know, it was probably 12 hour days uh, working on this game. You can ask my fiance. She's like, yeah, you were at the office all the time, always. And <laughs> just, it just didn't end. And I just... Um, and we we went to Kickstarter. Actually, we we worked on the game for about three or four months, and I said, okay, we have uh, 
an, a minimum viable product or a, uh, a vertical slice is what you call it, where it's like, okay, this is the game and this is what it's going to look like and feel like and play like the entire time. So um, we can like release a demo and people will know exactly what it's like. And so we made that and then we went to Kickstarter and we got a fair amount of attention. PC Gamer wrote about us. Wow. Uh, we, were on a whole, we were on a whole bunch of sites. We got a lot of attention and... We only got about 10% of the funding. Uh, oh, wow. We, we, yeah, we, we got that funding really fast, which we, we asked for $35,000, and we got about 3500 and it didn't go anywhere after that. And it was just really unfortunate, but... Hmm. Um, wow, that's a shame. And, but, yeah, it's too bad, but what I learned was... Uh, well, what I thought about was... Well, so we didn't succeed at Kickstarter, but this game still has to be made. And so we just had to self-fund it. Mm. And when when I created my game startup, uh, I also had, you know, I became the CEO of a company. I had to raise money all the time. So I was always finding investors, and uh, I found the money for the game. I said, look, well, you know, Kickstarter didn't work, but we need to make this happen. And so I got some new investors, and we made it happen and so um i uh, i unfortunately had to leave that company just just eight weeks ago i was working at a game startup and now i'm i'm working as a software developer uh for i'm actually working my first non-game development job right now and oh, it's very okay. it's interesting it's, it's great um and it it, it pays better but <laughs> i'm not making games anymore but it's still fun hmm. um I get, I get to go to work and work on software development puzzles, and then uh, I get to have my passion on the side as I work on Circadian. So right. that really that's and so I'm really happy because now I get to to still do what I love and and not be stressed out about running a business that is you know the game uh, the video game industry is so hard. It's just so hard. Right. Absolutely. You know, I know as um right now I'm actually, you know, I've been, in fact, because it's funny, I said earlier in the video that um, at 15 I said I'm going to write a book instead of uh, make a video game. And actually, I've, I've been writing a book for five years now, and that's currently the struggle I'm getting as I'm finishing. Um, there's always that struggle between creator and, and like, business, like, like, distributor, and... You, you know, there's always that that struggle, unfortunately. You know that that like, because you know, as as a creator or an indie developer, you you know you need help to to get the word out. And then of course the big businesses want to say, yeah, we'll help you out, but we're gonna get this much money of it. And it, you know, so it's it's game developing is definitely not as easy as people think it is. Even when you just finish the game, you know, marketing it is a whole nother you know ball game. So. <laughs> Yeah, that really might be the hardest part. Right, absolutely. However, this goes into our next question. On a lighter note, what is your favorite thing about making a game? So, um, there are a lot of aspects to making a game, and not surprisingly, since uh, people seem to value uh, programmers the most, you know, when it comes to the creation pipeline and i'd say programming is my strongest uh ability and it is my most favorite um nice. I, you know, I love seeing everything come together and that's what's amazing and I, I really like making sprites and artwork but it's it's a little more difficult for me because although that's what i started doing um it's not what i've been doing the last 10 years i haven't done any artwork and circadian is is my return to artwork actually right so um and i like making music and i used to do that when i was a teenager but um i'm just not i'm not great at it i'm okay mm -hmm. and um I, I have a hard time enjoying something if i'm not good at it so yeah no, <laughs> no of course that makes sense so i'd say programming for number one would be programming and then two would be making art and then three would be writing and then uh actually writing might be fourth whereas third would be uh actually maybe marketing because i get to share with the world right. uh as you've seen 
my Twitter and Facebook posts, I get to, you know, make a video clip of my game and get all these great reactions from people. I'm like, wow, they love it. And I, I love it too. And they want to support me. And um, so I'd say those are my favorite parts of making a game. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching the first part of the video. I have to say, just with a little closure of this first part, I had such a blast talking with Jeff, just for this little bit. I knew when I first got on the microphone with him that I was really going to enjoy talking to him. With that said, I very much have high hopes for Circadian, and I it wouldn't surprise me if the game were to do very well. With that said, I'm going to put all the links into Jeff Brooks' um, you know, like social media website so you can follow Circadian and support it. Because, um, I, I, you know, hopefully we can get a Kickstarter, you know, somewhere next year. Anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And in the next part, we will continue the interview. See you guys then.